Bonjour les War Gamers. <rire> Salut les Wargamers, c'est Ivy de French Wargame Studio, votre chaîne de rapport de bataille tuto et live peinture. Nous avions avec Nico Prime interviewé pas mal de grands noms de la figurine français et aujourd'hui nous avons la chance de vous présenter une interview menée par Nico Prime en anglais, sous-titrée en français, de Richard Gray, un des plus grands peintres de son temps. L'interview commencera comme d'habitude par un petit portrait de l'artiste et s'en suivra une conversation alimentée de différentes questions. Je vous laisse donc en compagnie de Nico et de Monsieur Gray pour ces 60 minutes avec Richard Gray. Richard Gray, this is your real name. Uh, you are 40, you are married, yep. and you are a professional painter. You live with your wife and your dogs in England, in a town located just between London and the Games Workshop headquarters in Nottingham. Maybe that's not a coincidence. <laughs> to explain your journey as a painter, I have to tell that since your own young age, not that you are old now, uh, you were into art. You spend a lot of time on drawing sci-fi comics on sit and sitting long hours in art classrooms. He was always practicing more art and was also being pushed by a professor to go further. And for this, I'd like to give them a big thank you. Young Richards also fell in love with Games Workshop miniatures and never missed a chance to read White Dwarf magazine. You were Richard, amazed with all the great illustrations and pictures of wonderful mini in this magazine. Younger, if I'm right, you were even wished, you even wished to become a member of Games Workshop illustration team. But yes, there is always a but. When Space Cruiser and Hero Craze came out, and yes, the first editions, uh, young Richard rushed to, rush to his local hobby store, grab the box, and the white dwarf, of course, and get back to home to proudly put some M&Ls paints with a crappy brush on those wonderful minis. Of course, the results were far from the art box and the white dwarf illustrations, but hey, who can say his first paint job was awesome? Not me. But even if the results weren't even yet present, you were hooked. In fact, painting was a natural progression for you from drawing and art in general. And art will always be part of your life. So it's not surprising that this feeling followed you at school and pushed you to pass a degree in art and visual communication. But during the studies, you learn a lot of techniques that will help you to think your paint. The way you put your lights or choose your color scheme, for example. The circle was so completed and after your studies, you put back yourself to painting miniatures. And with hard work, you progressed. The combination of loving art and your skill becoming so effective, as you being a competitor by nature, decide you to enter for a Golden Demon contest. And after several attempts, you won a Golden Demon in 1999. And many others after this one. You also won a lot of others different competition, too many, just to tell them here. Now you still continue to participate each year to do this contest with a non-stop increasing level of stunning miniatures. Now, even with a full cabinet of rewards, such as Golden Demons, your only real goal is to become a beta painter. I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> to achieve this goal, you focus your life on your painting. You breathe of it, you dream of it, you eat of it, and when you're not painting, you look for images or illustration about painting. You said to me, once black and white are involved into painting, color become minor issues. Truth is that you play with colors like lawyers would play with words. You twist them to your will, even if, you, if they don't agree. To show that, when the time comes to finally put some paint on a model, you don't see the process like a list of things to do or steps to check. You see the painting process as a globality and you adapt the dynamic of your work on each part to get the results you had in mind long time ago before starting your painting. Maybe because you already saw the goal that is hidden under the plastic. You just help it to reveal itself. But there is one thing that distinguishes you from other talented painters. It is your desire to teach painting to others. Give one fish to a man, he will hate one day. Learn him how to fish, 
it will eat every day. That's what you do with painting. Instead of painting a mini for someone, you prefer to teach him how to paint it. If after all that I just said, you are not on the way to like Richard's Facebook page or Instagram feed or subscribe his Patreon, I can say that you haven't begun to start living your miniature painter's life. Just go check it, be amazed and be inspired. Because in my opinion, inspiring is what you, Richard, do the best. Seeing you painting opens minds because you show and teach what's really possible to do with plastics, brush and paint. Your painting job makes us dream. And as grown up kids, isn't it what we all want? To be a child again, be amazed and be part of a fantasy world where dreams can come true. Do you recognize yourself in it? <laughs> I think it's somewhere in there. <laughs> it's somewhere in there. Re really hidden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Richard, let's go to the questions now. So, the first one. Um, old were you when you entered the hobby? Um, I think I was around about 11 years old. I oh, know it was a long time ago, but it's that, that kind of age. <laughs> uh, that's a question I like to ask too. Uh, do you think there is a, a perfect age to get into the hobby? Um, yeah, the younger the better, really, uh, because it just gives you that uh, much longer to progress with your skills. But you began your painting in a world without no internet, Facebook page, or any easy access inspirations. So how did you train yourself? A lot of it was uh, adapting um, painting that you would normally do, like children, you know, how they paint. So you just take the same things that you've learned painting in a two-dimensional way and then trying to adapt that to uh, model painting. Um, also, of course, uh, White Dwarf was there. Although yes. to a certain extent, white dwarf can hamper your style progression because then you start to copy the heavy metal style. And uh, so, if you want to then go back into uh, more like a traditional style painting, say for a two-dimensional style painting um, with light volumes and things like that, actually the yeah. uh, it, then they kind of collide, <laughs> and you have to then yes. unlearn um, things that you've picked up. Well, things you've learned uh, with the metal method, yes. Mm -hmm. And MM or non-metal metallic metals, mm -hmm. uh, which is something you are pretty good at. Uh, this is what you refer to to two-dimensional paintings. Yeah. Uh, for for yeah, I know you have. Uh, big collections of uh, terrains you you painted a long time ago but mm -hmm. is uh, painting on a bigger scale if you can say that uh, helps you to to understand some of the process you use now in your painting um it, it can help a little bit um because you don't on a larger scale you do definitely look at things differently um, and you can focus more on detail and you can be a bit more subtle as well um so, you know, because you can just see it more clearly. Uh, whereas then if you take that down into like a 28 millimeter scale, um, you have to kind of compromise a little bit on what you're doing, include on that, because you have to always remember about the, the clarity of the image, the model that you're looking at with the image. The buildings and the terrains you, you, you painted uh, are also a lot flat surface. Uh, yeah. com compared to a miniature or a bust or or even a, a 75 millimeters uh, scale miniatures uh, is the because one of your most uh, definition as a painter are obviously the, the free end you, you paint and mm -hmm. is uh, having a lot of flat surface led you to free ends or our free hands are one thing you would always wanted to put on it, and uh, Terrans are not really the best right. uh, miniatures to, to use them. No, your tra train is not great for freehand. Like, I, I like freehand, so I look for models actually with flat surfaces a little bit more often. Um, and that's something actually I find that uh, models with the you know improving technology, they become a little bit more detailed. And sometimes I find models are perhaps overly detailed where I wouldn't want them yeah. to be because and it's not just for freehand as well. So I enjoy freehand um, and that's as well linked to my illustration background. 
Um, but also just for painting things like textures and interesting surfaces on models. Um, if the model is already textured, then you're limited to how you can interpret it. Yeah, you can't paint a, a fur on uh, something and and uh, a clothes on something which is already fur. Exactly. Yeah. Like in, uh, yeah. Okay. What advice would you give to someone who tells you he wants to improve his painting skills or even want to enter contest? Do you have some really concrete uh, advices? Um, the the best thing you can do is to paint every day. It sounds simple, but people think that they can paint a little bit, say just at the weekends or whatever. But if you paint yeah. every day, it will, it will become a habit uh, so that you just do it automatically. And the other thing is you can't just paint and paint the same thing. So if you paint like, a, say, a Space Marine Army and you just paint every Space Marine the same, mm -hmm. you won't improve. Yeah. You, you'll improve at being able to paint a Space Marine quickly, but your technique will not improve. So always try to push yourself to do something harder. So it's more okay. of a case of doing a different model each time and seeing if you can do a better version. Okay, and change some, and change miniatures uh, to, to change yeah, what try, you have try to different, do. Yeah, different try types of models. To, yeah. Okay. Is there, if there was only one thing to work or pay a special attention on a miniature when you're painting it, what would be the most important thing for you? It's difficult to say either the focal point. So if you're painting again, like a, a humanoid, the, the kind of the head and the chest head, area. Though. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the most important, I think, to, to really get that, that section of the model really uh, well rendered. Um, because actually it can be interesting as well to just focus on say the focal points of the model and work those in to a high standard and then leave other areas on it in a more unfinished yeah. state. Um, it can be really interesting to see that kind of uh, work. Of course, don't do that if you do, <laughs> take a Golden Demon entry because you won't get a trophy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for a Golden Demon, I think uh, if you don't work all the, all the parts yeah. to a real level, that there is, but the judges will will take this in consideration, <laughs> but in bad consideration. Is there any uh, technique or any uh, tips you can give just to, to, to ensure this focal point to, to really pops out of the of the miniature uh, is it with uh, using brighter colors uh, deeper contrast or is there it's, something it's, you do specially on it it's mainly working with contrast that's both in color and tone um, uh, so you can basically like improve the lighting on those areas so it's not just a case of um, of course you can do focal points and still work up the whole model you know, and create like a, you know, a really high finish all over it. But then you use the lighting and the high contrast and all bright co colors um, to draw your eye to that focal point. Most of the of the painters um, do this, this focal point or modify this focal point at the very end of the mm -hmm. miniatures. I often see you working pieces by pieces of the, of the miniatures. Uh, but do you also work, rework or work uh, again on this focal point at the end? Or is it for you natural to, to paint each part separately and at the end you just grab them and that's okay? <laughs> well, a bit of both. Um, I don't have a set way of working really. So sometimes I'll just go through the whole model and very roughly block it all in and then work it all up afterwards. And then other times, as you say, I'll just focus on small areas. It doesn't matter too much because I can uh, picture in my mind how I want it to look anyway. Yeah. Um, but of course, at the end, it is worth um, tweaking the model just to make sure it all comes together at the end. What decides you to take your figurine under your brushes? Uh, are there any criteria set to set your choice? Uh, Games Workshop, for example, bring us so many incredible new skills and such in a short daily. Why choosing one more overall or all of them it's uh, it, it can it can be uh, complicated um, sometimes it's just a case of every now and then I'll, I'll see a model that's released and people will, uh, won't like the model and i kind of yeah. take that as like a so it'll be fun to paint that and say actually no you can make that model look good um other cases it like i might have an idea that i want to practice 
and and so I'll look for a model that uh, would work well with that. So, for example, a non-metallic metal um, type thing that I want to do that, and then I look for a model that would be good to represent that on. So, in that case, it would be something with nice curves and things like that, nice smooth curves. Um, I guess it's yeah. much easier to do in non-metallics on. <laughs> okay, so for you, uh, working on your non-metallic metals is is to paint an agash. Yeah. <laughs> That makes you work your non-metallic. Okay, so, so, so in fact, when you decide to to paint something, it's just because it's uh, it's mm. just a challenge to improve your non-metallic metals. Um, no, <laughs> no. Okay, uh, like so for Nagash in particular, <laughs> uh, I have um, like I have a whole vision for it. So there are a lot of elements involved in Nagash that I want to um, kind of work. You know, I'll make this really interesting image, um, and there's, there's still actually a lot of work to go, which will involve the the base as well. It's almost going to be uh, kind of a diorama when it's finished. Um, yeah, but the, I mean, the the non metallics are they they're more just fun on the gash actually. I, they they weren't such a major part of him, although he is obviously covered in armor. Um, but also, if I started painting some of the, the non metallics as like green, I thought, well, no one else yeah. has painted them green, so why not? And also, but I did take, I did look through like Games Workshop artwork for how, you know, the, with all their undead and things, oh, they yeah. always had the, the green glow and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I thought, well, that'll be interesting to incorporate as well. It's, it's a, you know, many facets. <laughs> Do you have a preset color schemes for some recipes? Or do you make them up on each miniature according to the ambience and uh, uh, even the base, something you, the, the ambience you want to create on your miniatures? Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, for, for example, like if I'm painting non-metallic gold, uh, like a fallback easy recipe would be like English yeah. uniform, Japanese uniform, ice yellow, white, That's a bit of white. Mornfang yeah. brown, you know. Um, but I don't use those every time. Uh, like I, I add different colors in. So I'm painting um, a baden at the moment, and I'm using yeah. uh, I'm mix, mixing in different colors, uh, and I'm using a pale gray blue color on the highlights. And people might, yeah. might think, well, that's you know, it's not a color that you would think of for a non-metallic gold. But gold, yeah, yeah, you know, there's but, there's um, no reason. Hmm. If you just look at like um, uh, it's like you said for the, the ambience and things like that and the atmosphere, it's really important like to for the whole model. So you can't just rely on recipes. But if the recipe yeah. fits the the atmosphere it's that okay, you want, yeah. then it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I go on, a, on another side, but uh, okay. does having uh, deadlines helps you to to paint things for contest mm -hmm. uh, or, 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 or it don't? Right. So having a deadline definitely helps you to finish a model. Uh, and that's good because it's very easy to get bored or sidetracked. So you, as you said earlier, Games Workshop, they release models very quickly. And if there's something new and exciting that they release, you'll be like, oh, I want to paint that now, even though I haven't finished what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so it is very good to force you to finish a model. However, um, I also really dislike the deadlines of the competition when I've spent a long time enjoying painting a model, then you have a week to go and you realize you still have half of it to paint. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, is, Isn't it what uh, happens with your more time for the, the Crystal yeah. Rush? Yeah, yeah I, um, I mean, it's happened to quite a lot of my entries really. I get uh, very, very frustrated because I always feel like I'm ruining the model because yeah. when I'm painting like in the laid back, relaxed way, with, when there's no competition nearby, like I, I'll look at what I've painted, I can go back to it, I can consider if it needs changes and things like that. When you only have a week to go, you don't have that option. Yes. And also, you have you put in more hours than you would regularly, so or you, you can't afford breaks as often, and it it makes you very tired. And so, if you make a mistake, it might might be a case of oh, I'll leave that. I might come back to it if I have time. Yeah. Yeah. So the quality of the paintwork drops. Um, and yeah, it, it really does get quite frustrating. And that was something actually I yeah. found when Games Workshop had the the mini Golden Demons. So I'm yeah. quite glad that they stopped doing those because there was a sort of a pressure to enter them. Pressure, yeah, pressure. Yeah. yeah. So you you keep trying to enter them, and then but every time I'm not happy because I've 
feel like I've, I've ruined a model. <laughs> yeah. And on this, would you say you are a quick painter or a slow painter? I'm sure you're going to tell me I'm both. That's <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm both. <laughs> most of all, really, from you, from inside, just to you. Don't imagine mm -hmm. you're talking to me. Are you really slow or really a fast painter? Uh, I'm I'm quite a fast painter, actually. Uh, I can very quickly realize, uh, you know, and uh, render the model how I want it. Um, but then I can also take a long time refining it. Um, so it just depends on how I feel. Sometimes it's just fun to just very quickly paint a, a model. So like in a yeah. couple of hours, you can complete a model and it looks really interesting. Um, of course, it won't really win a golden demon or anything, but um, yeah. It looked that, nice. That, that's just uh, that's just what uh, Maxime Penot told me about his painting. He said he said me, I spent twenty percent of my painting time on doing the the, the paint job, and eighty mm percent -hmm. of the time to do twenty percent of the miniature. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly like that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, how do we say uh, in French? We say l'enfer se cache dans les détails, but in English that would be uh, hell. Hell is in details. Yeah. Devil in the details. Do you easily say stop? I have spent too much time on this model for a competition or a contest. Of um, it's usually the other way around, and I'm like, actually, I haven't spent enough time on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So stop, saying stop is not easy for you. So, yeah. are you always satisfied of your work when putting the the final touch on, and you just break your, um... your brush? I usually have to wait uh, a little bit. So I, when I first finish a model, especially after I've had to rush for the competition, uh, I'm yeah. very dissatisfied with it. I'm, you know, I usually hate it. Um, T too much time on it. Yeah, exactly. Like you, well, especially yeah. for something like Mortarian, you spend so long looking at it and you know every kind of tiny detail on there and you just like, I don't want to look at it anymore. I, I, just, I just absolutely hate it. Um, but then I'll put it in a cabinet or I leave it on display. Like they have the Golden Demon displays at Games Workshop. So if you leave it there, so you, you just don't see the model for a long time. And then you go back and you kind of see it with fresh eyes uh, and you can look at it. And sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. I quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not too bad. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Do you have any favorite tool or OB brand uh, of tools? Oh, actually, um, yeah, I do have a favorite painting handle. Um, um, oh, I can't find where I put them now. <laughs> so um, the uh, Rathcore yeah, model holders. The Rathcore, the Rathcore yeah. model. Okay. I uh, love those. Yeah. <laughs> why? Just tell, tell me why. Right, the, the handle. I love the, the model the handle. The, to hold it. Okay. So everybody yeah. else, when you see them holding a model to paint, they hold the bottom bit of the model like yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I always hold the models like this. And before I had a handle, okay. you, okay, you, okay. I'd always rub the paint off the top. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. Each, each time, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and you get like okay. the oils. Or the undercoat or, or, or anything. Yeah, else. exactly. Uh, uh, and do you use the, um, the, the, the arc? The handle. To, uh, the handle, no, not the, but the 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 metallic part of it mm -hmm. to oh, yeah. um, to use it as a guide for your brush. Um, you I know I mean? that. Yeah, I know that's um, that was his idea behind it. But I find that I can actually I because I, I support my elbows on the the desk, so I don't really yeah. need that. My hands are quite steady anyway. Yeah, that, that's a question I had to to, to ask you also. Y your precision is just insane. I mean, when I see you painting uh, gradients on rivets uh, <laughs> on a miniature, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I can't do it. I just can't do it. My, my, uh, either I don't have the vision or either I, my, my, head's, uh, my hands are too, too shaky or I don't know, or my, my brush too, uh, too big. I don't know, mm -hmm. but... You well. do this. I see do, you do this uh, really uh, naturally. Uh, no problem at all. Okay. Uh, okay. So how do how do you do this? There there are a few things here. Uh, one, I don't drink caffeine and things like that when I'm painting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I I never do drink coffee, so that's okay. not part okay. of my problem. Um, a lot of it is just down to practice as well. Um, 
you know, and also being relaxed when you paint. So you really focus. Um, pe I think people get quite worked up if there's a really difficult detail to do. So it becomes a stressful situation. Uh, and when you become stressed, you, your focus isn't as good and you can't, yeah. um, you know, paint neatly. Um, yeah, that, that's what uh, I explain also to this. When you try to focus, your heartbeat go, goes up uh, yeah. just naturally. And, and if you stay calm, it will mm -hmm. go down and be normal and you'll be able to, to focus more, in fact. But yes, even exactly. with like that, I can't do gradients <laughs> on rivets. <laughs> are, are you a, a surgeon? Okay, a brain surgeon? Uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, I really, um, not joking, but mm -hmm. um, of course, the, 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 the end position on, on, the, on the table and the, the way you, you handle the mini is part of the job. Okay, but this is insane in precision. You must have a trick for it. That's not possible anymore. <laughs> I want to know how do you do this? Well, you see, you've seen the videos. I can't, I, I can't show anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> though there's no tricks and just, just skill, maybe. But practice, yeah. Practice. Okay. Do you think uh, that painting has evolved since you began practicing it? In, yeah, in there's, there's a minutes. huge, a huge evolution. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, because as well, like uh, th there was, and it started when the internet became much more of a, you know, everyone could see each other's work, and work. also um, the, the thing, it's like a community with uh, the model painters. So we all talk to each other and share our works and things and discuss techniques, um, and that really, uh, you know changes the way that we all look at the model so when i started it was yeah. all very again it was very um heavy metal style games workshop painting and that's really all you saw yeah. especially in the uk we either um because the only that, different things we'd that's, see that's the reference that's yeah. reference yeah okay. and then they had obviously the golden demon issues in the, the magazines and every now and then they'd show like say the french ones or the italian ones or whatever and those were really interesting because the styles were so different to what we would see but apart from those magazines you would never see anything different <laughs> yeah of course of course and now you can compare and see a uh, very variance and mm -hmm. very uh, um illustrations also, uh, has mm -hmm. also uh, evolved so uh, and this is part of the of the inspiration we can get in the white dwarfs or in the codexes or 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 in in sharing with other people so this is my question uh, where do you find your inspirations? Are there any painters or illustrators uh, that inspires you? Um, so I don't, I mean, there are many, many, many artists that okay. uh, inspire me, uh, model painters as well. Um, people like um, Sergio Calvo, uh, I really enjoy his work for the kind of, um, the amount of energy that he puts into it. Yeah, like there's and um, like all sort of the, the colors and things like that. It's really interesting um, how we can just put like just really high contrast uh, textures and things down. Um, I enjoy that a lot. Um, so I, mean, I, I don't want to. I feel like I don't want to miss people out as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna say, uh, quote me three. Okay. No more. I just want your three favorite uh, painters or illustrators. Uh, mm -hmm. you, that inspires you today. Okay, well, so we I'm, have I'm, gonna, Calvo. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say also some uh, like uh, 2D painters. So I really like uh, Gerald Brom. Okay, I don't know him. So. Uh, he's, he's a, he's I don't know his name, though. So, so. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. And, um, oh, and Frank Rosetta as well. I love the work of Frank Rosetta. <laughs> uh, I think I know him. Uh, you are. Has, yeah, I think I've heard this name before. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, is uh, illustration uh, more important for you to, uh, I mean, imagine what you would reproduce on uh, on a miniature than a than a real miniature? Um, model. I, I I think the the two D is is more inspiring because it's kind of like so especially from the, the Games Workshop angle. So you always, 
uh, and from a war gaming angle as well, you imagine the, the like the war zone and like the whole environment and things like that. So you can <clears> get like really dramatic atmospheres um, on say like the, the codex covers and things like that. And so you look at those and you think, well, how can I make the model look like that? Um, yeah. So it's in that environment. Uh, that's yeah. that's what really interests me. And, and what do you prefer, uh, having a, a miniatures with uh, battle damage or a very shiny, uh, untouched, uh, like uh, new for for the band, uh, for for the? Um, I think both the out to... of the box. I yeah. don't know. Um, <laughs> factory fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, factory fresh. Yeah. Um, that's the word I was looking. For. <laughs> Uh, I think both have their places. Uh, from for me personally, I do prefer a, a level of weathering, um, and sometimes like sometimes I even like overly weathered. You know, sometimes people yeah, put, re cover it yeah. in rust yeah. and things like that. It looks ridiculous, like it would never work, but um, it still looks interesting just because of the amount of texture and things going on. Yeah. The the mechanician would have been fired a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, but of course. But I see what you mean. But uh, it, it's it's more more interesting mm -hmm. because uh, you have uh, uh, life on it. I see. see yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the other it problem is life. Like, it's being it brings life. Yeah. My the thing that I'm not so keen on the factory fresh look um, from uh, from a visual perspective is. Once you've seen one area of the model, you tend to have seen all yeah, of it. Each one, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah whereas, like the, with the weathering, you know, when you look at a weathered model, you can have one area that's really heavily weathered and things, and like each area can be have like new, unique things. So yeah. it's more interesting to look at closely. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um, how would you define your painting style, and is uh, what is your favorite? painting technique i know this is two questions but uh, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. my interview uh, okay and you don't come here every day so <laughs> i take advantage of it yeah so um, I, I, do it in two parts if you want so how would you define your painting style my style and do you have a painting style first <laughs> um I, I think i do people can recognize my work uh, quite easily i think so um i'd say the the high contrast um Total. yeah that that kind of look like a dark moody atmosphere i think high contrast um that's that's something that i quite often incorporate into my work um and my yeah, favorite that's, technique that's, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah the second part where is your favorite technique yeah, to favorite get this, technique. this eye contrast and eye contrast um i love working with the the light volumes on models so that's like the size of the the highlights and things. So um, it's if you think of like Games Workshop style, they, they do the edge highlighting, uh, whereas light yeah, volumes are more like how the light would naturally fall on the model. So if it's a curved surface, it will, you know, the light follows the shape of the curve and things. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna jump on a different part of the interview and just look of your look some of your miniatures and try to to help understand people how you painted it and why you painted like this mm -hmm. okay so we're going to start with uh, the the neve uh, the stormcast mm -hmm. um what can you I, i'm going to start on it okay it's well painted uh, no problem at <laughs> all your 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 nmm is just amazing uh with reflections of uh, f from the grounds and from the okay um the the cloak the, the fur cloak is just uh insane i just said the your, your precisions on the on each uh it's okay why did you decide to paint it like that uh th this was more of a kind of uh, a challenge piece for me um i hadn't painted any of the uh the stormcast models before yeah. Um, and to, to be honest, I hadn't really enjoyed them when they first came out. They, they didn't really excite me that much. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that was the the Space Marines looks. In yeah. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so. But they've, they've grown on me a lot since then because, it's, again, they've got the nice curved surfaces for the non-metallics and things like that. So it's quite fun to paint them, especially the, the newer ones now. There's a lot more going on on the, yeah. on the models. Yeah. Um, but with Neve, um, 
I like that she was a female warrior as well. Um, yeah. It was... Uh, there is not a lot of female in a war on the case. Exactly, so. yeah. Not um, now with the, the Sisters of Battle. Yeah, but, uh, so it's, it's a lot at better. The time, at the time, at the time yeah. that was... Uh, yeah. So because it was a, a female, because there, you could put a lot of non-metallic goals on it, mm -hmm. this is why you, you, you choose it. Okay. Yeah, and but also why? because... Well, especially at the time, like I, um, I hadn't done quite that much non-metallics, so it was more of a, you know, a practice piece as well. Yeah. Yeah, there is large, of course, large non-metallics on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But why, uh, why this pose? Why this this base? Because uh, why having flowers on a base? Why uh, <laughs> using these colors on a base? Um, what was the the the, the ambience? What 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 do you consider this this miniatures is telling us? So, if you look at the dynamics of the the pose, so it's a very um, it, it's an action pose, uh, yeah. which in itself very is open. quite yeah yeah is um, so it's as well open is uh, something that I really like in a model as well, um, especially uh, I, I'm not keen when models have weapons right in front of them blocking off yeah. the chest and things like that it makes it a lot harder to you know f do the focal points where you want yeah, yeah. on the chest as yeah, well I see. um yeah. and also i like to paint models mostly when they're all uh, stuck together um yeah so yes you you have to 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 do in two parts or three parts and yeah and that's to get the the perfect light on on uh, yeah yeah you that, have to 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 take back and uh, repeat yeah put uh, it yeah it's okay. it's a pain okay. Now. yeah okay um, that, that was a one piece of mm -hmm. miniatures okay. yeah uh, although I mean I had to keep the cloak off the, so the cloak was an issue uh, because it had the join on the shoulder so I had to do that afterwards yeah. but um, like I said I really enjoyed the pose and it reminded me a little bit of um, do you know the film three hundred Yes, of course. Right. So there's a yeah. bit where there's um Spartan Warrior and he's jumping like off of a rock. Yeah. 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 And if you look at the rock that I've placed her on, so it's she's running up the rock ready to leap off. Um Okay. And so he's got that that really nice, you know, dynamic movement in there. Um what uh I think so uh for this uh NMM gold, uh this is your usual recipe to to paint it or did you change um, it i can't remember what colors i used okay, okay. <laughs> i don't think it was my usual recipe um no you can i think yeah there is more orange than you yeah. usually uh, use okay mm -hmm. i'm right yeah i think i think you're right oh yes. okay, okay. <laughs> um and and just on the cloak why did you decide to to do it like that this is um, really for me. This is insane. When I just first saw it, I couldn't move for I don't know 15 <laughs> minutes. J just my oh, my my look was on it, and I couldn't move. This is insane to 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 go on each part like you did. Why did you decide to do it like that? Um. Well, the way that the cloaks are usually sculpted. So obviously, you can't sculpt each individual strand of fur because it would be ridiculous. So when the, the sculptors do it, they always have big chunks of fur. Uh, and I always think it looks a little bit... And, and, and I think this is more and more like now, the, 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 a bigger chunk now, I think. Yeah, yeah they're getting they bigger. used to be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I, I guess it's easy to paint having the bigger chunks, but I, I don't like the look of it. So I wanted yeah. to try and um, you know add that detail back in. So on every chunk of fur... I just painted lots of individual fur. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so you separate <laughs> in three, four, each, each, each ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you know why? You understand now why you can be inspiring to people because <laughs> normal people don't decide to do this. <laughs> there is a stand. They paint stand. They don't decide to divide it in four parts. This is okay. This is very impressive to look. But to do it, it, it must have took you a lot of time. Um, yeah, it did actually. That was the the most kind of boring part of the painting. Because so you can so you do one part of it, say like the the bit on the shoulder, um, and it's easy to do that. 
and you think, oh, I like how it looks. And then you're like, right now I've got to do the whole of the back of the cloak. <laughs> <laughs> My God, what did I do? Exactly, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, do, do you still love looking at it now, years later? Um, I don't know. Or is it what, or, 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 <laughs> would there be changes you would do on it? Um, I probably paint it completely differently now. Uh, the thing is, uh, once a piece is done, then it served its purpose, uh, and I, I never, you know, it's always the next model is more interesting than whatever I've done. So yeah, yeah, that's a sentence we always say. Uh, what's your favorite uh, miniature? The one I'll paint next. Uh, exactly. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have to ask you. Uh, this question too so please don't tell uh, the next one <laughs> <laughs> um so we're gonna jump on the second miniatures you painted you, you painted this way is it in it is insane and the colors are just amazing why did you choose to paint it like this and especially with these colors i'd like now to talk really about the colors and mm -hmm. the tonality of the colors and the way you you had it uh a lot of contrast and high contrast on it. Really high contrast. Using the colors. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Well, there's kind of there's a cheat here. Um, so <laughs> because people always say you shouldn't paint red and blue together, and I'm like, right, yeah. I'm yeah. going to paint yeah. this red and blue. This is the the the, <laughs> yeah. the, the Spiderman. Uh, 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 in yeah. French, we say says uh, le syndrome Spiderman, mais uh, the the, the, the Spiderman syndrome. Yeah. Um, so i thought well it's ridiculous to say you can't do something so i wanted to do it however to make that work if you look closely at the model um there's actually not that much color on i know it looks colorful yeah but yeah, the yeah. majority of the the model is actually really dark uh, so i've spent a lot of time glazing um uh, gr dark gray um yeah. black and things like that in there uh, and then the highlights, so the red goes up to orange, like a quite bright orange, and there's also green in the blue. Uh, so I, it looks like it's there's a lot of red and blue, but there's actually a lot of orange and white and <laughs> things like that. It's, um, it's to kind so of did, make it work did, better. Yeah. So so you uh, you raised your contrast and your light mm -hmm. with uh, the desaturation of the yeah of the exactly paint. yeah okay so this is why you have eye contrast really mm -hmm. desaturated and some black at the opposite too okay but this is the the way you often uh go to place light on your miniatures uh, as mm -hmm. far as i know and why do you choose this method uh instead of having a, a real saturation uh, on colors you prefer to go higher and desaturate with white, with uh, a paler, paler ski, paler, paler color. Um, I never saw you, uh, except on the yellow, uh, mm -hmm. using the um, the saturation of the color, the the pure color. I mean, yeah. uh, as a as a final point. Mm -hmm. Why do you always go further? Um, it's just my preference. It's just you know what excites me. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is no technical reasons or uh, photographic reason because um, you obviously uh, uh, take a lot of pictures to just to share or, or to maybe you use photography to test your miniatures. Yeah, so the photographs really are for me. Um, so I um, I find like, Instagram in particular really useful. So I take the photo, I put it on Instagram, and then I can look at it whenever I want. And it's easy just to you know quickly zoom in, look for things that I want to change, um, and just look at the whole image as well because a problem that people have when they're painting is they focus on one area and they lose the big picture whereas you have to make a good model you have to to really look at the whole thing you can't just focus on one area area and then hope it all works as one piece um so yeah. you know i take the photo and i just look at it and that you know i can zoom in i can look at the whole thing just spend my time thinking about it um yeah, so it, it, it's nice that people follow it, it, work, helps you. but it, it's, it helps me, yeah. And, and does it help you to choose also the, the tonality of the colors, uh, the, the, the photography, um, I mean? 
Uh, yes, it does. Actually, uh, it helps a lot. Um, so I, I have the idea in my head, and I know how I want it to look. Um, but when you take the photograph, then you can really see: is that area light enough, or is that area dark enough? Yeah. Um, it, it just but, it helps uh, you tweak, make changes, and things. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, most of the time, uh, pictures uh, don't really get all the the, the difference uh, you paint. Mm -hmm. um, there is always a, a bit of a loss on a, on a, on the photography. Um, mm -hmm. How how uh, how do you manage this? Because maybe you have in real life uh, a really high contrast, and you just take a picture, and it seems less. You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, um... Do you adjust? Do you adjust your painting because of the painting of the the pictures of the photography, or or is it the opposite? Um. It is, again, both. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. No, pro no problem with that. No problem. <laughs> um, you have to be careful when you're painting the model and you take the photograph and you think, right, so that area needs to be brighter or whatever, and you go back and change that. You can't just paint something for the photograph. Now, a lot of people do that because they're just worried about how good it looks on their Instagram or whatever, but which is fine. But if you want to enter it in the competition, it has to look good in reality as well. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's a delicate balance. And sometimes models look amazing in photographs and they don't look it in reality. And sometimes it's the opposite way around as well. And some models are really hard to photograph. And then you see the you see the photo and you think, oh, well, that's rubbish. Why did that win a trophy? And then you see it yeah, in reality. Okay. And it's actually amazing. Amazing, um, yeah. As we often say, we can be better painters, but we almost are poor photographer. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Really, if you want to, um, your the social media aspect is kind of. If you want both, you have to be good at photography and model painting. Yeah. On on your uh, on your miniatures, okay, you, you made a great deal on on your blue and and red contrast, and there is also some other parts, and especially how you uh, you you gave uh, dynamism. We can really see the movement in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it because the way you painted the base, or is it because of the the colors you choose at the extremity of the mm -hmm. of the, it's, the miniatures? Yeah, so it's the the brightness of the focus on the um, like the smoke trails and things like that. So that those are really emphasized. Uh, also, when I so I converted the model, if you look at the original one, it has wings on. Yeah, and I really didn't like the wings. They're awful. They're, they're awful. <laughs> they they cut the model right in half, uh, yeah. so the, the composition then hides either. So you can either see just the top of the model or just the bottom, depending on how you hold it. Um, and I, you know, I looked at the model without the wings on. I thought, well, it looks much better. It's really nice With it, without. Yeah, yeah, uh, it looks a really nice composition without. Um, and so then again, so as I said, I just focused the highlights on all the the smoke and the trailing things because they already have a lot of movement. Uh, on them, uh, and just by emphasizing them, it really emphasizes the fact that he's traveling forwards. You, uh, I love this because on on your night hunt and dead, uh, most of your dead people, you place flowers on the base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always like that because the, the, there is also a contrast here mm -hmm. with, yeah. with the, the death and and the and lives. The, yeah, uh, uh, you do this on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did the same on um, my. I did a, a Death Guard um, dreadnought, yeah. Um, and so that was all very heavily weathered, uh, like uh, I was talking about earlier, overly weathered. Um, and you know, so it wouldn't really work or anything like that. But then it had like all nice flowers at the bottom. Yeah, I, I thought it was a really nice contrast. Um, but this contrast, you know, just really interesting. I think. Um, and it's not just a case of contrast. People always think contrast, you just think of the color wheel, but there's all different yeah. types of contrast. There's contrast in yeah. surface and, uh, and you know, light and dark and uh, just concepts as well, you know, all yeah. these things. Ma materials and yeah. that's what I wanted to, to show about. Last thing on this miniatures, uh, in my mind, I, I won't say in general, but in my mind, it would have been more logical to have the the main body in blue and the smoke in red this is my logic 
<laughs> I don't say it is a better logic, but why do you choose to uh, to paint the colors this way and not as would my logical would uh, <laughs> would prefer to have it? So from your logical way you view, so that would make the the rider and the horse as the brightest parts. So they would be yeah. like the the focal points, if you like. Um, well, uh, to a certain extent, if you look uh, a little bit closer, you can see. So he has like the um, candles on the, the head candles, of the horse yeah. Yeah, and yeah. on his uh, shoulders and things, and also he has some uh, non-metallic gold on his face as well. Yeah. Uh, so for the the non-metallic to work better, you need a yeah. darker area around it, uh, and also if he was uh, like really light blue, then the candles would get lost as well, and you wouldn't see the you know, the brightness yeah. and the, the color in the candles. Okay, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> because <laughs> th there is some case where the logical isn't the the way you better paint a miniature. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also, yeah. Um, well, just to, to carry on a little bit further than that, it's more menacing, I feel, to have him be the dark and moody yeah, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to jump on the third miniature you painted. And of course, this one, I lo absolutely love it. And uh, when I came back for myself into painting, because I, I had a break at a certain moment, uh, this is the miniature I, I came back into a hobby because of you. If I could say, <laughs> uh, this is uh, your Mortal, mm -hmm. um, which you present uh, on. Uh, I, I first saw him when you presented for the the Crystal Bush, and then after mm -hmm. uh, uh, into uh, the Games Workshop uh, Golden Demons. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about the last version, so the the Games Workshop uh, Golden yeah. Demons version, even if differences are, are subtle, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, they're subtle, but they okay. take a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was about to say. Uh, first of all, we're going to evac the, the wings problem, OK? Because <laughs> once again, this is insane, and your uh, your free ends on it are just absolutely uh, mind-breaking because they fit into the, the characters, because they fit into the, the, the Nurgle's uh, spirit. <laughs> um, and with the, the character, of course. Uh, to achieve this, I think I know that you have to re-sculpt or de-sculpt uh, most of the wings. Um, <laughs> so once again, this is a, a kind of way of painting that unsculpt a miniature to paint it, but it works so well. I, I can't say just more on it. Um, so OK. The wings are done. They're just insane. You ask us then to 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 make some some awesome uh, free ends on it. Mm -hmm. The main body. Yeah. Uh, why did you choose to paint in with these colors? Once again, to create high contrast because this is not the 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 Nurgle green uh, the the use uh, the, the use for heavy metals or something like that. you go really brighter mm -hmm. um why um Th that's going to be more questions about it but first just the color of the armor so i did well there's a lot of um research involved in the model um and for some of that originally uh, he's part of um a space marine legion called the death guard their armor was originally white so yeah. i wanted to incorporate that into the model, um, but still have it kind of nurgly. So it's kind of got like um, it's a, it's not white color, but it has like greens and uh, blues and things in there as well. Um, yeah, to make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, th that's what I wanted to say. That there is not only one color on it. There is, I don't know. I I try to to use Photoshop to to get all the because yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I I couldn't get all of them. That's not possible. <laughs> you have such uh, mix uh, of orange, of green, of uh, blue. Uh, I, I even think there is a violet uh, and a pink uh, at some points and uh, orange. Okay, w what gets into your mind to so to put all of these colors? Because okay, I want to to uh, pre erase the uh, themes. Okay, this is white or cream. Or 
off-white, I don't know. Uh, no, mm -hmm. you just decided to use four or five or six different colors to get a cream. Yeah. Um, why? Why mix? It? No, <laughs> my, my real questions. My real question, and there is, why do you always, most of the time, mix your paints? Uh, I, I really often see you mixing paints uh, to get uh, halfway uh, mm -hmm. tunnels uh, between one, two, three, and maybe uh, more uh, colors uh, to, to get some different some variation or to create interest uh, uh, or uh, um, a different materials uh, mm -hmm. or a different of uh, aspect on, especially flat surface. Yeah, like the shoulder, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, well, one, it's it's more fun for me. So you, you know, you're adding more to it. Um, also, I, I'm always aware from like it's it's not quite so exciting, but from a judging perspective, if it looks more unique, then it'll stand out more, and you know, they'll like it more. Um, yeah. And but also, like, it is fun to paint like that. Um, and you can add a lot of subtle, you know, colors or whatever you like, subtle details to to a, a piece. Um, just, you know, as you go through the the kind of like the highlighting stages. So it's not a case of you have to paint on top, paint all these extra details on. And, you know, people think, oh, I paint a perfectly smooth transition on an armor, and then yeah. work on top of extra and keep doing all these extra things. You can build all these things into it while you paint it. Um, so it doesn't really take much longer. Yeah, I, OK. Uh, and creating textures this way is more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's easier, much that, easier yeah. than if you were trying to do a perfect thing. Uh, exactly, with, yeah. With a perfect gradient. OK. Yeah, so, so textures are much more interesting, and they're a lot easier to do. And also, yeah. like if you like, sometimes there's imperfections in the model, so you just turn that into a piece of interest yeah. rather yeah, than that's like, it. oh, that's it. got to you know, smooth okay. the model down. Yeah, I split. Uh, don't care. It's gonna be uh, something interesting in a minute. <laughs> um, okay, the base. The base looks, for me, totally uh, realistic. Mm -hmm. And the miniature isn't. Mm. So, why did you choose to go on this to to hide the the interest on the model? Or to uh, to make because uh, ob obviously on mine Mortarion, I try to to do something else on uh, and incorporate uh, Mortarion into um, a war zone or something. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, you uh, you try to when I look at it, it's like you you wanted to to people to, to forget the base. Mm. Yeah, well, I didn't. So the base. So the problem with the Mortarion, so obviously I painted on the wings and things like that. If there's a limit to how much you can put onto a model before it just becomes too much. And if I did the yeah. base like super detailed and like bright or like whatever, I did, like yeah, I did. Okay. Um, <laughs> then it fight it fights the model. Um, yeah. And I don't want the, the the base to do that. The base is just there to, you know, be kind of interesting, but you know, the focal point is the model. The, the, there is uh, one thing on Mortarion mm -hmm. that everyone hates to paint is the flame on the base. Mm. Because uh, <laughs> for myself, I just cut them out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I did something absolutely different with it. I just get out, get rid of the, of the flames. But here, um, most of people don't like them because they, it's hard to, to get the flames uh, go with the cloak and, yeah and don't don't look uh, separate from the cloak. Mm -hmm. here uh, you, you use green and blue cloak find green green flames and blue cloak but it looks merge how did you yeah. merge that? so yeah so i also struggled with the the flames a little bit on the bottom um because as you said they they merge into the cloak and there's no definition between the two yeah but the problem is that the cloak I painted as textured and the flames are not. They just smooth sort of flame things. And I, was, I wasn't I was entirely sure how to make it work um, 
because I, I did paint the most smooth to, to begin with and it, it didn't didn't work i didn't like it um and I, I had ideas for like making them kind of glow internally so like in the recesses it would be brighter and then get darker as it goes out but they're still they're very um smooth surfaces on there that there's not a lot you can do with it it's not like you can paint extra details of smoke on because it doesn't look like smoke then um and so i then thought about um well it's nurgle like they have rot and things like that and i was thinking kind of spores from plants you know like mushrooms and things yeah. like that um and so i just started doing lots of dots in the recesses so the same kind of idea and if you look in the recesses of the smoke yeah. There are lots and lots of dots. It took me forever, but I you know, I covered the whole area in these dot things. And then if you look, it then travels up the cloak and there are small areas all over the model where there's these tiny yeah, little the tiny little dots. Yes. Tiny little dots, yeah. Okay. So this is obviously something the the brain don't see but mm -hmm. understands. You see what I mean? This is not something on you you can directly see okay it's blue it's white and it's, it's green it's blue but as you have those green dots going not all, all over the models but the the brains understand it and it feels more uh, subtle and more uh, mm -hmm. in two pieces okay yeah i'd like to finish on this model with the face because <laughs> this is obviously the I, I, for myself, I think this is the most difficult part of uh, any mini miniatures, the faces. Mm -hmm. uh, here on Mortion, the faces is part hidden, so we can't really see it at all. But we have to, to give him some expression, some intention, some, mm -hmm. so, so, uh, general feeling. And uh, as you said, it, it's mostly the time, the focal point of the miniatures. Here, I wouldn't say the, the, the face is, is the focal point, but it's part of. Mm -hmm. Which special attention did you took to, to, to paint it? All right, so the face was complicated. As you said, there's a hood there, so you can't see it very clearly. Actually, when I put the model on the base as it was in, um, as said, built it, uh, he, he faces downwards as well. So he has the hood and he faces downwards. and. Um, I didn't actually like that. So when I attached him to my base, he's tilted backwards. Uh, I don't think many people realize that, but if you compare him to the standard model, if you look them together, yeah. you, you can actually see him face on now. Yeah, it also lets you see the alternative pose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It also lets you see the, the wings a little bit better because those are also angled down on the yeah. original model. Yeah. Um, so I did that. I did make the mistake of painting the head separately well i say mistake um motarian is a horrible model to paint yeah. um because he has I said the, the little cherubs with the chains on everywhere yeah. and obviously the wings and he's really hard to hold uh, he's too big to fit in a, a model holder or anything like that yeah. so you have to paint him in segments um so i painted the the head and i put a lot of detail into it but then when i looked at it on the model the head was too dark like it was just it was like nothing um but it was kind of like if I were overwork it or it could lose the detail. But what I ended up doing was just kind of glazing um, bone and white colors on top of it. And that actually had a really nice effect because uh, I could just glaze towards the center of the face because it's quite a large face, yeah. same in comparison yeah. to a space marine or whatever. Um, so you have a little bit of room to maneuver. And so I focused the light towards the center of his face. Uh, that also allowed the eyes to stand out more so there's a little bit more dark around them um and it took away the dark lines uh, because the face is quite heavily detailed so there's some really heavy recesses and things like that um and the temptation is to just paint the 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 uh, raised edges um but that creates really high contrast with the dark in the recesses and the highlights on top and it looks kind of awkward so like a face naturally doesn't have these really deep lines all over it um so by glazing over it uh, but allowing the paint to go into the recesses uh it softened the face a little bit as well um and just allowed him you know to put, allow for the face to stand out more basically uh, and just look a bit more natural yeah and it, it also ca catches the, the tunnel intensity with the the shoulders yeah uh, exactly uh, on, on the the games workshop model the the faces is really darker than the shoulders 
and and finally you don't see it as as much as you do here uh glazing and and um fading i would say uh the the, the total uh, upper part of uh, of Motai, and i mean his, his shoulders and uh, and his face makes him really stand out and really also that's strange but stand out the the, the wings uh, backwards uh, which are in different colors it, it gives a, a stop uh, mm -hmm. I see, you see what i mean a stop and then there is something else and as you said motarin is really big and uh, mm -hmm. you 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 have to to draw the attention somewhere and say okay there is details but stop get your focus attention here yeah and i think this is a perfect job so once again thank you for painting it um <laughs> okay I, I just finish on on your laser because uh painting laser which looks like real laser is very hard uh here we if we we zoom in we, we can see you have you added some texture onto a flat surface, and this is why uh, how you create interest interest on surfaces. You you create textures, and could you explain how did you paint your leather? All right, the leather um, is done in so it's not hyper realistic, um, but it, it's mainly just a case of uh, very heavy, heavily textured uh, marks all over. Um, Again, you have to make sure that the the texture is it goes all over the model uh, because the problem uh, again people sometimes find is you'll use the texture as a highlight, uh, but then once you've painted the the textures on the highlights, then how do you put the texture in the shadows? Um, and it looks like parts of the model are unpainted or not painted enough. So you have to still make sure that you get the uh, the texture in there, and then. So I just I, I glaze over it then. So you over yeah. highlight it and then glaze it down, uh, and it allows you to keep the texture there, but it's, it's more subtle. And, you know. Yeah, it, 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 it gives you something consistent from any point. Uh, it it yeah. has the the same uh, texture or, or old age uh, everywhere on each part uh, with mm -hmm. keeping your your gradients uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you can also uh, add more colors to it. Um, which I, I do. Uh, so in certain areas, it can look like more stained or, um, you know, there's different little marks, subtle marks all over. Like you might not take them in just looking at the model, but if you look closely, they're, they're all there. There's all little yeah. subtle differences. Um, yeah. I also decided to change it and make it not uh, natural looking by glazing red onto it. Yeah. <laughs> that was, again, uh, there's a bit, of, a bit of contrast with the, some of the greens on the, the armor a bit as well. Um, Again, it's it's very soft um, contrast, but it it is there, uh, and also obviously the the bright green uh, on the the smoke um, it works with that as well. Yeah, is the 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 red you put in it just to to get more heat and make the the wings go? Um, yeah. Yeah. Is so the wings to, are, to 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 bring the the heat bring back forward, yeah. and, and go. Yeah. Okay. So I was right. Yes. <laughs> uh, and finally, on this Mortarion, uh, did you add all the pieces uh, uh, Games Workshop give? I mean, all the smokes on the side, uh, mm -hmm. all. I know there isn't. So, why did you choose <laughs> not to put uh, every piece of the model? Um, well, they are optional on the model, so you don't have to put everything yeah. on. Um, so, uh, and to be honest, I, I wasn't overly keen on a lot of the smoke. Some of it was, it's nice to have on there because it you know creates a bit of variation and interest on the model. But um, I think you could add too much, especially the uh, bits coming from the uh, the chimneys on his top. So yeah. the, um, there's an option to have a lot of smoke coming out of there. And I just don't think it's necessary. Uh, and also, again, from his weapon, you have the option of putting some smoke on that. And that would also hide some of the nice weapon details, I think. Yeah, totally agree. Some parts aren't necessary to to make the interest on the part. It even going to to hide some of the exactly or, yeah. or, or get the, the the readings of the miniature harder because mm -hmm. there is too many details. Okay, so we have finished on your 
paintings and we're going to go back on some questions. Can you tell us what do you think about detailing on miniatures? Especially mm -hmm. now that technology has improved. Uh, I say this because of your work, obviously, uh, and your Mortarian wings and mm -hmm. night shoulders. And, but uh, why do you think today we have too much details? And what, mm -hmm. what's the, the, the implication uh, into paintings? Mm -hmm. Or arts in general. I would say yeah. I would prefer to say in arts. Um, I think there's a, a lot of um, reasons for it. Uh, I have you have to remember as well, um, especially Games Workshop. They they cater to a lot of different people. Um, it's not just painters. So there's war gamers yeah. and things. And um, if there's a lot of detail on a model, it's very easy to pick it out with uh, quick, simple techniques like dry brushing or, or washes and yeah. things like that. So you know, you have to remember that. They're not just making models for for me. They have to yeah. <laughs> do them for everyone. Um, I also think there's a little bit of they put the details on because they can. Uh, they want to show how good they are uh, making all these details. They're making models, yes. Yeah. Um, but again, I I don't always appreciate it because it actually makes it hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, in fact, you prefer to have the choice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for for example, like yeah. So say texture on a surface. I want the option to paint it however I want. I don't want to be forced into that texture. I don't really like when they put uh, scratches and chips on models, um, because one I find that they tend to be a little bit out of scale almost. Like they're they're always bigger than they need to be, or like they're always, or you know, all a similar sort of size all over, um, and you know, I, I just find it kind of frustrating if I want damage on the model. I, mean, I think most people can damage the models if they want to. Yeah. Um, and just generally for like lots of, if there's, you know, the model is over detailed, it just actually takes a lot longer and a lot more effort to, to paint it. To paint, um, yeah. Because, you know, you, you have to do more trips with the brush to your paint palette just to change the colors all the time, just to, you know, pick out all the details. Um, and it can be harder to create the focal points and things just because it, you know, it all gets lost in the detail. You know, it's, okay. it's, it can be very, it's very quick and easy to do like a nice clean surface. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course, of course. Uh, especially on the on the, um, the weathering and the, we we often we often see people painting uh, battle damage and scratches uh, mm -hmm. on strange spots. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, do, do you think there is some uh, place where battle damage can be or must be it's a balance um the the most important thing at the end for the end result is that the model looks good so i try to work with weathering in a way that i think looks natural yeah um so, you know, like on the edges of things or, you know, yeah. if it's got a shield, like the shield would take more damage and all sorts of things like that. Uh, but also, don't just force yourself to paint it because that's where it's supposed to go if it doesn't look very good, because what's the point? <laughs> yeah, of course. But there is, we often see some, some battle damage uh, which uh, wouldn't exist. I mean, uh, uh, often to cross the cross yeah you see. it's, it's uh, my my it's, biggest bugbear these crosses everywhere i call yeah, them little yeah. little kisses you know yeah. when, when people send messages in the uk yeah. like, or, or maybe the they play uh they play uh in france it's morpion but uh, uh you know the, this uh this square when you have a, a round square and you place either around or across i i feel like yeah, this, yeah, each, each yeah. time okay he played on it um, <laughs> they and crosses, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, different, totally different question, but when you, obviously, there was recently um, a, a, a big pandemic, uh, okay, called coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, it changed all the contests uh, mm -hmm. during the, those months, and maybe for all the months to come, the months to come. Obviously, I think you had prepared some some pieces for for this contest. Maybe you stopped and take much time uh, mm -hmm. to, to prepare them now that you know that all those manifestations are are cancelled. 
uh, and I know it was bad thing for you, especially for the the adept chicken mm -hmm. the, to be cancelled. But uh, will it change your plans and your painting for the next uh, competition? Uh, yes, um, it'll have quite a big impact actually. So I stopped the the competition pieces. Uh, I had a strong suspicion, like a couple of weeks before Adepticon, that it was going to be cancelled, and um, I still had quite a bit of work to do on the models. And I thought, well, there's no point in rushing now, and um, I can just take my time. Originally, Nagash was just going to be a single piece entry. Like I'd got the plans before it, but then I had to scale it back so just so I could get it yeah. done in time. Uh, and now I've um, decided to again push forward with the original plan. Yeah. So it's going to be a very like involved piece. Um, okay. Should, well, I think it, everyone would benefit from that to see what the original vision yeah. is rather than having to see a rushed vision. Okay. It means it changed categories, so so people might not be happy. But <laughs> ah. <laughs> who cares what anyone wants? Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I don't. Know. It's, it's... Maybe you'll have a, a golden demon in a category you haven't had one before. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm aiming to put him in a diorama category now, so I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't. You, you don't have any. I don't oh, I can't, I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you have too many. So okay. Um, okay. So you're going to change your plan for those contests. What do you think about the, the latest uh, reveal of Games Workshop? I mean. For example, the Necrons, but also the, the, the Marines. Do you um, think the, 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 the next version? I say this because we already we already have seen that the the heavy metal we are referencing from the beginning is evolving. I don't mm -hmm. I don't know if you have seen that too, but there yeah. are more in gradients, there are more in shadows, there are more. Mm -hmm. So especially with the ne new Necron uh, ranch, would you think uh what do you think about those new miniatures and do, do, do are you hyped to to paint them yeah i am really excited for the necrons actually um especially because they're all metallic as well so i can really have some fun with the the non-metallics on them <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> i was sure of this <laughs> yeah okay this one is more important what is your favorite color the one you you couldn't live without i i don't know um <laughs> I don't. I, I'm tempted to say Mephiston red just because I like the color, but I can live yeah. without it. <laughs> yes, of course, but uh, <laughs> maybe uh, yeah. Okay, Mephiston red. So Games Workshop uh, Citadel, of course, uh, Mephiston. Mm -hmm. um, no problem. Hmm. I mean, that's not. So, I, that's I not would favorite. also say red uh, because uh, because of uh, of skin, and uh, mm -hmm. you, you can't really paint skin if you don't have red. To, to 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 do carnations uh, and yeah. give life to the yeah okay well, um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah except for like that yeah Th this one is just for me because this is my interview and it's just for me why have you ever painted a space wolf model yeah they are well... the coolest <laughs> <laughs> and don't say they're wrong because you would break my heart into pieces so why haven't you ever painted any space wolves? Yeah, well, I did when I was a, when I was very young. I did have a space wolf army. Okay, but I love you. I am. I love I am, you. I am, <laughs> I am uh, it was quite a long time ago, though. Um, so yeah. I am going to paint some more space wolves. Um, I've got the new um, new Ragnar. Yeah, the new Ragnar. Uh, he looks fantastic. Um, so yeah. I've just got to start work on him. I might make a few conversions, tweak him a little bit. Not not too much, please. Not too much, just <laughs> a tiny bit. I, yeah. I like to be able to to replicate what what you will. <laughs> I haven't decided okay. yet if I did with blonde or black hair though. Ah yes, it's, that's true. That uh, that's one of the uh, future questions. So we'll come back <laughs> on it in a few moments. So we have come to 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 the end of my questions, and we have to go on the viewers' questions. Uh, first is from uh, Ivan Tavares, uh, who, who asks, how do you choose your lights and how do you manage the intensity? Well, I use a lamp to give me a rough idea, um, depending on the, the light direction. Uh, I also change it depending on what I think looks good or where I want the focal point to be. And then you just kind of you, you make it brighter if you want it to be the, the focal points. You add 
kind of white or whatever color you're using as your um, highlight. Okay. This one's from different people. So, from what dimension do you come to paint so well? <laughs> <laughs> and I think they'd like to, to, to know the answer. <laughs> Is secret. there an answer possible? Okay, from an another dimension than, than ours. Um, and this one is, is funny too, but uh, do you want to adopt me or to marry me? <laughs> I, I, I think mo most of the people love, really love your, your work. They want, they want you to adopt them. Uh, okay, no real one. Uh, what is the most, uh, from Serminos Darden, uh, what is the most important in painting between realism and atmosphere, between an excessive naturalism of reproduction, of reality, and a certain impressionism that tells the story. I don't think there is any in, important, there's no like, hierarchy. Um, it's whatever direction you want to go in. So if you want to do hyper-realism, um, that's fine. You know. Um, however, I think it's, uh, it's important to find a style and try and like, adapt your own style so you can rep, you, know, you can show uh the you know what your the vision that you want uh, it's not just try not to just copy someone uh and then stick with it you know yeah it's good to copy too to improve your skills but then yeah. adapt it and try and be yourself yeah i i i would say that for me uh the, the most important is just the 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 um the atmosphere you give, mm -hmm. no, no matter no matter the the techniques or the naturalism. Yeah. The or technique is, is really irrelevant as as long as you do the technique yeah. well. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one from Jean Paul Montier. Yes, how does the inspiration for you f uh, for your free hands uh, come? Um, which part of the figure you place them? You place them uh, because your free hands are always well thought and in the good spirit of the figurine. So how do you, how comes the idea of a free hand? Um, well, there's a lot of uh, research that goes into the free hands. Uh, so I look at um, whatever the model is, what if it has a backstory, um, uh, you know, what the uh, correct iconography is for the model and things like that. Um, and then I adapt something um, that I think is interesting from that Th that's a point uh I, effectively I, I didn't mention that you you always uh do research before painting is it yeah well yeah <laughs> not not always always but like if it's yeah. a, like an important piece um yeah. well, because when you're doing a freehand as well like it's quite complex uh and you can't just i mean well some people can but it like it's very difficult to paint something straight off without having any yeah. um, from the ground from the ground from yeah from the ground mm -hmm. from adrien juan uh, which pieces are you the most proud of probably yeah probably um mortarian just for the sake that it took so long to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh i totally agree with you uh <laughs> if, even though you have Oh, a uh, wonderful piece. From Christophe Garo, how do you organize your day around painting, not just the painting time itself? Um, I have a, a pretty similar routine every day. Um, but, uh, I don't have a problem you know, sitting down to paint, uh, but obviously I have to do uh, all my other work as well, so I've got the Patreon and things. Um, and it, it depends a little bit on what needs doing each day. Um, so I can focus a little bit more on one or the other, depending on what he's doing. But yeah. uh, it's it's pretty simple. Just sit down and paint, <laughs> yeah. and, and fit to your schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How many projects do you usually work at on the same time? Uh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> too many to count. Too, too many. Too many. Um, yeah. I, um, you're just like me. You have three or five or six models just yeah. started, but yeah. oh, we're going to wait. I have to wait before I continue well, it. Well, sometimes it's nice just to take a break. Uh, you have to be careful, though, if you wait too long between models. You find sometimes your tastes change, and then you go back to it, and you think, yeah. actually, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm going to change it. But um, yeah, I like to just you know keep it interesting. It's more interesting for me uh, you know, just to jump between things. OK. 
from Christophe Lerich. Uh, okay, that's a funny question, and you'll see why I kept it. Is Christian Grey your brother? So, you, <laughs> so if so, can you share with us his address book? Okay, that's not why I keep the answer because the the answer is obviously no, he can't because he's not his brother, and Christian Grey is a fictive person. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you remember, but Games Workshop did a commercial TV um, spot with uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, with and he ended with uh, no more plastic. So my question about this is knowing that um, they release some new kind of paints, contrast, and the others mm -hmm. uh, did uh, shift shifters and all those new generations of paints. Do you use them? And why if you don't? Um, I use them um, not heavily. So for, for contrast paints, I'll use it uh, more like a glaze thing to enrich yeah. colors and things like that, kind of like an ink. Um, Most people. Yeah, um, but generally speaking, I prefer the more traditional, you know, using paint, mixing paint, yeah. like painting. Okay. <laughs> I totally agree with you. Um, and the second question coming from this joke, I would say, is uh, do you have any tips on keeping motivation up? Because Okay, there is plenty of reason when you can stop and say, I'll do something else. I have to, to go with my wife. I have go to, to take care of the children. I have go to, to walk out with my dogs. I have to. Okay, there is a hundred reasons why you wouldn't paint. But how do you keep painting? Uh, I don't really have a problem not painting. I just, I, I, I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the pro yes, but I sometimes, to, sometimes, yeah. for example, Motayo, okay, you have a, a 200 hours okay, on it and you have to finish it. Maybe there is a oh, little yeah. bit of lack of motivation. And yeah. how do you succeed? Well, it's not, go it's, back it's hate, it? it's pure hate. But <laughs> <laughs> pure hate, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no, really, is there anything you do to help you uh, getting um, motivated? I so in the background I have like uh, music on or films or whatever, um, and I take kind of have quite frequent breaks as well. Uh, try not to. Uh, it, it's quite easy, especially if you're highly focused. You can get tired uh, quite easily uh, if it's a difficult thing to do. Um, don't force yourself to keep painting with, or if you're too tired or anxious or anything like that, because it, it's pointless. You're not going to produce yeah. your best work. Okay, this this one is is a joke, but I have to do it anyway. It's from uh, Alexis Luillier. Maybe you know him because he already has won uh, maybe ten ten golden demons. Uh, could you please give some lessons to Nico Prime so that he finally learns how to paint at least the basics, please? So, okay, <laughs> the question is posed. Okay, I'll go to the next one. Richard from Nicolas Mignot. Uh, how do you prepare your miniatures and how long does it take? Uh, it takes me a long time uh, to prepare my models. Um, I can't stand mold lines or things like that. Also, like on guns, I always drill out the barrels, uh, all those kind of <laughs> things. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But like, so I use a, a scalpel to take off the mold lines quite often. Um, and also I use um, Tamiya glue, uh, that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, I find that yeah. really useful. To, so what to, happens to fill in uh, holes? Um, not just fill in holes, but what I find is when you've scraped off the detail and things like that, you can get uh, slightly rough surfaces or s tiny, tiny bits of plastic left on. If you just run that over it, because it's you know it's uh, the um, ultra thin glue, so it runs like water, yeah. and it just melts off any kind of um, dodgy little yeah. bits that stick out. Okay, from uh, Sorrent. In spite of your eye level, do you still use dry brushing technique? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's going to love this. He, he's our friend specialist of the dry brush. He always paints everything in dry brush. Mm -hmm. um, well, dry brushing can be, uh, you can make it more complicated as well. Like you can do more things with it. It's not just a case of you know, rubbing paint off and dry brushing on. You can do have different levels of uh, consistency with the paint. So it could be wet more wet or more, more dry wet, and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
th that's why he tries to to explain to everyone but <laughs> uh how do you achieve the best possible transitions and how do you give uh, how would you give a polarized you, you know like the the sunglasses a polarized polarized uh, effects um the smoothest transitions uh probably from glazing i mean there's there's many different techniques you can get a, a really nice uh, transition um it just depends the the kind of look that you prefer like glazing will have um uh multiple layers and look uh like a deeper finish uh you can do wet blending that gives a very smooth finish as well um so it doesn't really matter you can use any technique you want just get really good at it how to do a polarized i mean I, generally speaking the surfaces are not that different to one another they're either really shiny or they're shiny matte or whatever you know there's they're all just surfaces that react differently with light and they're different colors so um the the technique wouldn't change really yeah, uh, yeah. you know i mean like paint a mirror or whatever um you know it's it's not going to change yeah, i'm not going to have to use a special technique to do it technique yeah and maybe for this case maybe using shape shift is just the the good answer um, for him for him not for maybe. photography of course yeah, no no not not for, in, in real um, in real paint maybe those those kind of mm -hmm. new paints may i would it. I would say, like, if you wanted to just paint it, though, I would say to take reference photos of the shape shifting yeah. uh, paint, um, so you can then you just have to replicate whatever it is that yeah. you see with, with normal paint. Mm -hmm. Okay, from uh, Florent Bello, do you approach materials differently? Uh, for I mean, plastic, resin, metals. Uh, on the building side, yes. <laughs> um, the, yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, resin is uh, or can be a nightmare to work with, um, especially as well because resin um, has sharper details, and I don't actually like that. Sometimes the details are too uh, sharp, too, too, um, too thin. Yeah, too thin. Uh, it makes it awkward to get nice paint paint effects on them. Whereas you can paint something to look sharp. You, it's harder if you don't want it to be as sharp when yeah, it's already yeah, yeah, sculpted yeah, okay. like that. Um, and with metals, uh, metal um, metal can be hard hard work uh, in the preparation stage, just because it's you know harder yeah. to to work with to yeah. sand down things. But with the actual painting itself, um, really none of the materials matter because you know you put the primer on it and yeah. that, that's it. The surface is all just primed color. From Ludo Aller, what is your favorite uh, miniature, and uh, what was your first your first figures? I don't really have a favorite miniature. Um, it's so easy, like you know, depending on the day when you look at them. Some, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the the next one. As we yeah, say. so it's so always the next, next one. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my first miniature um, was. Probably a space marine. I think my neighbor had some space. From... I can't remember. It was it was probably a space marine. Yeah, a space marine. Yeah. yeah. Does the fluff the the story uh, also inspire your choice of miniature when you paint them? And do you have a, a favorite special character? Mm -hmm. um, the, the 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 background definitely influences how I paint the model. Um, because it has, it's like for a golden demon competition, it has to. <laughs> they do take that into account. So if you, you paint something, paint like a, an orc that's yellow and pink, yeah. you, you probably generic, can... uh, generic one, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, and do you have favorite... a favorite one in the law? I I love the Horus Heresy law. Okay. Yeah. And a special character in this. Um, in special this character. Law? Oh. I don't uh, know. Uh... The, the emperor. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, he sucks. <laughs> he sucks. He sleeps all the day. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. He never paints a single miniature. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Orus? Uh, um, Rubot Gilliman? No. Uh, no, not for really. <laughs> No. No. Liman Ross. Liman Ross. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. I like, I like Magnus, yeah. though. Magnus is quite cool. Magnus, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it did nothing wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do you paint? Other things than miniatures. Yeah, I haven't done Maybe. in quite a while now. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I used to, to paint uh, a lot of, um, I get it was very fantasy inspired things like uh, book cover type artwork and things like that. Um, but I don't have time for it anymore. What are the things apart, apart from practicing that allowed you to progress the most? Maybe the material, the tools, the chromatography study, the accuracy, the technique lights. The yeah, looking at artwork. That, looking at artwork. Yeah, yeah. studying. I see what and, you mean. And yeah. Look, yeah. yeah, looking what um, the others do. Yeah, and it's not just that it's it's kind of like trying to understand it. So looking for like why did they do that? What why did they make these choices? Right. That's that makes a big difference. Okay. From another one, uh, what is your favorite brushes? Well, I, I, I exclusively use um, Artis Opus brushes. Um, before that, I used Broken Toad. I've used um, Rosemary & Co. I've used Windsor & Newton. Uh, they're, all, they're all pretty good brushes, to be honest. I've, um, I've never really had a, a brand of brushes that I actively disliked. Okay, uh, and the same question with the the brands of uh, of paint because uh, obviously you, I often see you using Vallejo and mm -hmm. uh, Games Workshop paints, but yeah. uh, if there would be a favorite one, which would it be? If and, uh, I could, only why why use... not the others? I would prefer say why do you prefer this, uh, maybe the other, mm -hmm. upon you... the others. Yeah, so if uh, I could only use over, one over the others. Yeah, if it, one brand of paint, it would be Vallejo, because um, one, there is a massive range of colors. So, um, I mean, not that that's that important. Like, you can, you know, mix your colors uh, to whatever color you want if you have the three primary ones. Um, but um, I just like the having those options. Uh, I also like that they have quite high opacity in general. Like some of them yeah. are rubbish, but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but, it... uh, obviously compared to, to, I don't know, army painters, for example, which are more uh, fluid. I don't mm -hmm. know how to say this, but uh, um, yeah, they, they are more consistent yeah. uh, in, in use, in use. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, from Damien and Marco, how do you approach the white painting? Uh, because this is obviously one of the hardest things. <laughs> everything, uh, everything is some, one of the hardest things. And, <laughs> and for especially on a on a, a toe army, because he wants to paint oh, in, in white. Right. So how do you approach the, the white? Paint? Um, the first thing to do when painting white is to not paint it white. Well, having said that, there are options. Like if you wanted a very, uh, very clean white, you can spray it white and then yeah. shade downwards. Um, that will um, that'll give you a very bright color. Um, that's not my preferred method, though. I would paint everything kind of off-white, um, maybe with a slight bias towards blue, maybe. Depends. But as long as it's, um, it's a light color, um, but not white, then you can use white to highlight you know, yeah. focal points and edges and things like that. Because uh, if you, you know, you start off with white, then you can't go any higher. <laughs> yeah. You reach the top level. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> can you describe, uh, from uh, Thomas Davis, can you describe your creative process? I think this is a hard question, very, very <laughs> hard question, but <laughs> I have to ask it. I look at the box art. Um, I'll probably uh, Google to see if anyone else has painted one. Uh, I, I don't like to have my model look like other people's. I might take inspiration from other people or whatever, but I, ultimately I will purposefully change parts of it um, yeah, to, to make it look uh, unique. And then taking all that into account, then I'll just uh, look at the model and kind of decide you know, how I think that, like the, the feel of the model, how I can you know, bring that out there. Kind of the image that i want it's a very kind of loose image that i have in my head um yeah. it's more like like the atmosphere that i have in mind and then so i start applying that and then i can adapt it as i go along depending on um you know what i feel okay. i totally see you. i have the same the same process mm -hmm. and the final questions from our viewers is uh what tools or materials do you recommend for a beginner and brush, uh, paint, anything. And what should change when you begin to progress? 
So to begin with, you uh, you don't need anything too fancy. Um, a wet palette might make your life easier, but it's not absolutely necessary. So, you know, uh, even a basic, like I spent years and years just using a basic palette, uh, like a tile or, or whatever you want. Um, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, just get for some cheap brushes to start with. Uh, just be aware that the cheaper brushes will wear out quicker. quicker. Um, but uh, although, like, if you get a more expensive brush, it, it will last longer. If you are prepared to learn how to look after it, then it might actually save you money having a more expensive yeah. brush. Um, it just depends because it, it is a learning curve. So for the very beginning, I, I would say, you know, try a cheaper brush uh, because they, they still work. They still have, like, you know, good points on them and things like that. It's just the basics. It, it doesn't change that much from high-level painting yeah. to, to basic painting. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I would say that getting level you can invest in you can invest branches. yeah because yeah. you you won't uh turn them as quick as uh, as you're beginning uh mm -hmm. you develop and you learn things as you go along so i like a wet palette because i can put all my colors on the the wet palette as i go along and i can change between them um other people don't like wet palettes uh and like, there's all sorts of arguments mm -hmm. for it. I disagree with them, but I, <laughs> um, for my style of painting, I, I think a, a wet palette, you know, it, it allows you a bit more freedom yeah. to do what you want. You definitely don't need an airbrush. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, I, I see that a lot. Okay. People are always like, "Oh, yeah. do I need an airbrush to yeah. to get good at painting?" You don't. Well. Richard, we have come to an end to, to this interview. I really want to thank you again for coming here tonight to share with us your way of painting and your way of thinking about painting. Uh, I really hope uh, that this uh, 60 minutes with you uh, will allow the, the viewers to discover you more and appreciate what your talent and your artistic genius is um, and your kindness too. Uh, it only remains me to thank you warmly for the friendship you have shown to me by accepting this interview. And promise, Richard, uh, as a thank you, we will send you a full crate of fresh French snails. It won't, <laughs> it, it won't be said that we don't know how to take care of our guests here. So, Richard, uh, only what's one last thing to do is to say... A plus level gamer. A plus level gamer. <laughs>